Welcome to Purpose. I'm your host, Corey Clark. I'm just a normal girl who decided to go for it. I created a thriving business from the ground up without sacrificing my sanity, and I believe that you can do the same. You were created on purpose, for a purpose, and I fully believe you can turn that purpose into profit. Each week, I'm going to bring you practical advice to help you live your life and grow your business on purpose. Welcome back to another episode of Purpose. I'm your host, Corey Clark, and I am so excited to have you back for another amazing week. This week, I am interviewing my friend, Amber Brzezinski, and we are chatting about health and fitness and all that good stuff. And we're actually, the reason we're talking about it is because I feel like you need to um, protect your health and your energy as an entrepreneur and as the CEO of your business. And um, it's just really important because in my opinion, your health and your energy is your greatest asset. Your business is not going to survive without you. So um, before we jump into that interview, though, I just wanted to let you guys know that today... Well, as of the day of this interview, um, we signed our contract for Purpose Babe Live, and it is going to be a two-day live conference for purpose-driven female entrepreneurs, and we are going to help you get realigned with your purpose and your values and your vision and um, help give you the courage that you need to move forward in your business and then bring you practical, tactical advice that other experts in the industry are using. So I'm really excited about that. We're going to be getting ticket sales going very soon. It's going to be October 23rd and 24th in Orange County, California. So go ahead and get that marked on your calendar now. But what I want you to do is go to coreyclark.com forward slash live and you will be able to get on the wait list so that you can get early bird tickets. So we are going to do an early bird special just for all of my purpose babes who are ready to commit and get themselves in the room. It is so important to get yourselves in the room. Um, I'm going to do another episode about that pretty soon, but um, I just came back from, I spent two days at my friend Britt Siva's event and she, she helps hairstylists build their businesses and get to a six figure business with spending less time behind the chair. She put together an event for her members and it was amazing. It was here in Irvine. So I was able to go and just go support her and cheer her on. And it was so exciting. So it really doesn't matter what industry you're in, putting yourself in a room with other people who are, um, excited about their life and their business, just like you are, who are at maybe a higher level than you put yourself in those rooms because I promise you it's going to take you to the next level. So, um, anyways, let me introduce you to Amber. So Amber helps women achieve their health and fitness goals from a place of gratitude and self love. She believes it is possible and important to work for the body you want while loving the body you have. This is the premise she built her company, Biceps After Babies, around. She firmly believes you are 100% worthy as you are, but learning how to set and achieve personal goals will help you better understand how freaking powerful you are. She's a registered nurse, a certified personal trainer, and a wife of one and mom to four. So my friend Amber, she's amazing. I actually went through her program at the end of last year. um, And it was like, it was seriously a game changer for me. And so we're going to get into more of that in the interview. But I do have a link. She has a free class coming, which it's a class I took. and It's a free class. And then I also purchased her program because... I, she's the best. And, um, so you can sign up for her free class. I'll put the link in the show notes. It's bicepsafterbabies.com slash Corey. Um, but let's get into the interview. Okay. So I just want to introduce you guys really quick to my friend, Amber Breezy Am I saying that right? Yeah. Breezy Okay. Woo. For the longest time, I thought it was like 
Brewski. Brewski. <laughs> Everybody does. Yes. So um, Amber and I met in a mutual like entrepreneur group. And so we are like business friends, but she also is like amazing at health and fitness. I'm going to let her introduce herself way better, but I actually just like went through her macros program and I love it so much. And so that's why I was like, I have to get her on the show because I know that I have other female entrepreneurs listening to this and sometimes we can ignore our health. And so I really wanted to just talk about that with Amber today. So Amber, I will let you give the more proper introduction. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me here. Um, so I'm Amber Brzezicki and um, about four years ago, I started my brand Biceps After Babies. And I always joke that like my, the name Biceps After Babies is probably the most creative thing I've ever come up with in my entire life. <laughs> but my focus was really on helping moms to be able, specifically women and specifically moms mostly, um, to be able to step into their best version of themselves. I feel like when we become moms and when we start to take care of these humans and we have businesses and we have husbands and we have lives and you know, whatever, we um, can sometimes forget that like taking care of ourselves and our health and our fitness, it kind of goes by the wayside. And we have maybe some of these limiting beliefs that, well, I'm not 20 anymore, so I can't you know, look the way I did when I was 20. Or I've had I've had four kids. And so I can't look a certain way because I've had four kids. And so my whole premise is this idea that your fittest days are not behind you, that you can be your fittest self, um, wherever you at, are at in your journey. And I do that through, um, I do a lot of weightlifting and weightlifting and strength, um, and then also macro counting. So macro counting was what I found four years ago that really helped me to transform my body. Um, I had been a fitness instructor for many years and I felt like I exercised all the time, right? Like I was at the gym teaching classes. Like I did all of the things, but I felt like my body just kind of always looked the same, like never changed. And I, I knew that it was because my nutrition wasn't aligned with my goals. And so I found macro counting and it made sense to me. It had the science behind it. And I'm, I have a bachelor's of science in nursing. And so like the science piece of it was really important to me. And I implemented the things that I was learning with macro counting and I lost 10 pounds and I had abs for the first time. And it was really exciting to be able to feel like I was in control with what my body looked like. And when I paired up the workouts that I was doing with the nutrition that I needed, that's when everything changed. And so now I help women specifically to be able to become aligned with their nutrition for whatever their goals are, whether it's fat loss or muscle gain, um, or just a healthier relationship with food. And I do that through my program, Macros 101. Yes, I love it. And I don't think you just said, but I've heard you say it before that you got a six pack while still eating ice cream. Oh yes. Right? Yes. This is like the thing, right? So it is the thing. We, we can talk more about macro counting and what, um, what it entails and, and the premise of it. But yes, over that eight week period that I was able to lose 10 pounds, I did it eating ice cream every single night. Um, and that is the beauty of macro counting is that it is not cutting out food groups. It is not restricting sweets or sugar. Um, it is teaching you what moderation looks like. So it wasn't like I had a huge bowl. I mean, I didn't have like 12 servings of ice cream every night. I didn't eat a pint of ice cream every night, but I had ice cream every single night and I was able to get a six pack. And so many people think that those things are mutually exclusive. Like it's an or, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's either I can like actually like food and like eat good food or I can have the body I want. And I like to really reframe it like, no, it's, it's an and both. Like you can yeah. have the six pack or the, you know, fit into a smaller dress size or whatever your goal is. And you can eat the food that you love. They don't have to be mutually ex exclusive. Yeah. And I think that's why I loved, um, well, I loved when I heard you say that, I think I heard you say it at one of James's <laughs> events and I was like, my ears perked up Yeah, and I had done macro counting before, but it was literally like a friend taught me. And so I, you know, whatever it worked for a little while, but then I was like, I don't want to do this forever. I don't want to yeah. weigh my food all the time, but Needless to say, like it is like the, you can't have both. And that's kind of a lot of entrepreneurs, they are like living that truth because they are like creating the life they want. And they're becoming something that some people might say, oh, well, you can't do that. You can't, you can't make, you know, hundreds of thousand dollars and ha you know, be happy. And like, you actually can. But I think for me, like, um, one thing as an entrepreneur is I was really neglecting my health because I was really spread like too thin, you know, mm -hmm. and raising a family, running a business. And, you know, it's like all I could find time for was going on a walk, which was 
in my mind, it was fine. But um, I really started to realize, like, especially this year, we have a lot going for our business. And I'm just like, I really need to like put my health first because I really feel like as entrepreneurs and as solopreneurs, like our health is actually our greatest asset and our energy is our greatest asset. So um, can you speak to that a little bit about being yeah. an entrepreneur and taking care of your health? Totally. And, and I, and the thing that I see so often with too many entrepreneurs too, is that you can hustle your little heart out only for so long. And I have heard story after story after story of so many entrepreneurs who get to this point of like physical and mental burnout because they have pushed and pushed and pushed and they've neglected their health for so long. And, and you talk to anybody who has experienced that they will come and say like, I didn't realize how awful I was being to my body until my body literally like couldn't do anything else. Like I could, it was telling me that I had to stop. And what I want for your audience is to never have to get to that point. Like we don't have to get to the point of your body breaking down for you to know that you need to take care of it in order to be your best self, to show up as your best self to your audience and be able to serve. We as entrepreneurs and I assume for most of your audience, like we are serving people, right? That's, that's what we do. We serve people. And if your glass is not full, you are not able to pour into somebody else. And so when we take care of our health and our fitness and feeling our best selves, you are going to in turn, give your best version of you to your business, to your clients. Um, and that's going to make all the difference. And I want to say too, one thing that I hear a lot, and this specifically applies to entrepreneurs is, is this idea that like, yes, it's like not a priority, but specifically that they don't have the time to do it. And I really like to, would like to challenge that thought of like, I don't have the time in order to count macros, or I don't have the time to go to the gym, or I don't have the time to do X, Y, and Z because I'm so busy with my business. And I, and I really think it, it more is a matter of like, you don't have the time not to focus on this because your business depends on you. And if you are out of commission, your business is nothing. Um, and in Macros 101, one of the things that I teach is that and it's this principle of, um, I call it macros in 20 minutes a day, but that you can count macros or do whatever you are to promote your health in just as little as 20 minutes a day. And if we, it's more important to take that consistent 20 minute step every single day, rather than thinking that you have to spend an hour at the gym, plus you have to meal prep, plus you have to log everything and weigh everything and like do all the things. And so then we get overwhelmed and we just don't do it. And so what I would really like to offer to your audience is that if like we can break it down into like little, little bite-sized pieces of things that you can do, just little things that you can do every day that can make a big compounding difference over time. Totally. And I feel like that's what really helped me um, resonate with you as I was going through the program is um, I, you just like offer so much grace to your students and to your audience, who, people who listen to your podcast, however they follow you is like you really do, you make it seem attainable um, and doable and you give us the power to, you know, like, like we take ownership of what we're doing and it's not like you're following all these rules. It's like you're our guide and our coach. And I just like, honestly, I haven't even been able to talk to you since I went through it. And so I'm like excited to share. Hold on. I need a drink. Sorry. Good girl. <laughs> drink that water. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay, so I went through the program. I started before the holidays and um, and was just, I was literally just doing what you said. Mm -hmm. I wasn't being super like crazy. Oh my gosh, get every single, you know, macro perfect, every mm -hmm. single weighing perfect. But I was learning it and doing it. And so I lost five pounds in like those first four weeks. My clothes fit better. I feel better. And then we were heading into the holidays and which normally like I can do one of two things. If I'm like on a diet, which mm -hmm. like, I don't even like, I hate even saying that or using that word. Um, then I can be like really obsessive about it. And, but then I feel really bad and I'm like, well, this is dumb. Like I'm not even enjoying myself or I can just get to the point where I say, screw it. I'm just gonna do what I want and then completely like sabotage any progress I'd made. So going into these holidays, we had family coming and staying with us. We were, um, my parents were taking all of us to Disneyland and staying at the resort for like four days. And so, um, I just kind of like took what you said at, cause you at, like in the program and in your coaching, you're just very much like, just make the decision, like decide what you're going to do. And like, you know, when mm -hmm. you're going to 
and like start your reverse diet and all that kind of stuff. But, and so I just decided like, there wasn't necessarily like a rule or a trick. And so I just told myself, okay, I'm going into this. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm, I'm not going to be like, you know, I'm counting my macros while I'm at Disneyland and I'm sticking to my macros every day. And so what I actually decided to do, I don't know, you might be like, this is bad. Don't say this. But <laughs> I guarantee I, I will say it's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I actually decided I was not going to track at all because I knew if I started tracking and seeing like some of this stuff I'm eating is actually really bad, then I would go into either that guilt mode or that like sabotage mode. And so I mm -hmm. thought, I'm just not going to track. I'm going to try to keep my protein up. I'm going to try to keep my carbs down, but I'm not going to obsess over it. I want to enjoy my time at Disneyland. And so um, after the holidays, after everybody went back, I had like maintained my weight. I That's hadn't awesome. like gained. I didn't have a miserable trip because I was like so obsessed about counting my macros. And so, um, and now I'm back you know, now I'm back mm -hmm. on it, like working out, counting my macros. I feel great. And, and I just, I don't know. I'm so excited because I finally feel like I'm at a point where I have control of my mm -hmm. health. I get to make the choices and like for you, it's ice cream for me. It's like my husband's skinny margaritas. It's like, I, you know, I know how to count the macros for those. I put them in, in the morning when I know I'm going to have one and, and I don't worry about it. And there's no guilt. Know? Yeah. 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 And I will say that that is an excellent way to, to run your vacation. And I'm all about, like you said, I, I, there is no right or wrong. Like I am not a big fan of giving you a bunch of rules to follow that. Like if you don't follow, well, it's your fault that you didn't lose the weight. Like that is not the way that people are successful. Mm -hmm. Um, I am all about you being intentional, creating an intention that aligns with your values and what you want to create and then executing on that. And whatever that looks like, I'm happy if you think about it ahead of time, create an intention and then execute on it. That's, that's mm -hmm. exactly what I want. Does your audience know what macros are? Should we explain? I, yeah, let's explain it because I have no idea. I honestly, okay. like, I don't ever talk about health other than, you know, telling women to, that they need to make themselves a priority and they need to get rest and they need to drink water. So I would, yeah. Sure. Go ahead and awesome. Share. Yeah. So just really quickly for anybody who's like hearing us throw on this term macros and macro counting is like, are we talking about macaroni and cheese or what are we talking about? <laughs> um, this is kind of, and some of you may have heard of it cause it's kind of a buzzword in the fitness industry. Um, I feel like over the last couple of years has kind of come more mainstream. Um, but macro counting is really just one step, um, beyond calorie counting. And most people understand counting your calories. We know that we get energy from food and we expend energy during the day. And, and when we expend more energy than we bring in, we lose weight. And if we, you know, expend less than we bring in, then we gain weight. Um, and so we, most people have that understanding of that concept, but what most people don't understand is that those calories come from something like there are things in your food that have calories and there are three macronutrients specifically that are contributing calories to your food. So you have your fats, you have your protein and you have your carbs. And, um, each of those pieces of your food, give it calories. Um, and when we can pay attention to how many fat we're getting, how many protein we're getting, how many carbs, rather than just like this umbrella of how many calories we're getting, we can really help fuel our body in a way that it can perform its best. It, it it's like, um, it's like these levers that like you want to have, okay, I would liken it to like a car, right? So if you have a car, there's multiple different types of fluids that you have, right? You have your radiator fluid and you have your, your oil and you have your gas. And it's like, it doesn't matter how much gas you have. If you don't have enough oil, like the car is not going to run. <laughs> and it's the same way with your macronutrients. Like if you don't have enough carbs, you're going to feel like crap and you're not going to have the energy that you need. If you don't have enough protein, you're probably going to lose muscle mass. You're going to be really hungry because protein is very satiating. If you don't have enough fat, you're going to have hormone imbalances that are actually going to impact your fat loss. And so macro counting is really about paying attention to each of the macronutrients, making sure that you're getting enough of each macronutrient, right? You're fueling your body with enough carbs, enough protein, enough fat to be able to do what it needs to do to lose weight. And at the same time, yes, maintaining a caloric deficit, because that's something that we need to create in order to see fat loss. Um, and so when we count our macros, we're just paying attention to like, okay, cool. This, this burger isn't bad or good right? It's just a burger and, um, we don't have to label it. We don't have to say it's clean or un unclean or like paleo friendly or whatever. It's just a burger. And that burger contains 
maybe 30 grams of fat and, you know, 15 grams of protein and maybe 40 grams of carbs, right? And so that is that burger. And we can decide whether or not we want to fit that into our plan for the day or not. Um, if you have a budget of macros every day and you get to choose how you spend it. And so what Corey was speaking to and what I find with so many of my clients is that it is a very empowering journey because somebody else isn't telling you what to do. They're not giving you a meal plan and saying, hey, follow this. You're able to create your own meal plan. And if you want to have a skinny margarita, you put it into your macros for the day and it fits. If you want to have ice cream after the kids go to bed, so that's my, that's my like guilty pleasure. Then you've put it in and it fits and you're able to continue to still see results because you are eating enough to fuel your body, but also eating, you know, eating the right amounts in order to um, see that weight loss that you want to have. Yeah. I love that. And I mean, it makes total sense when you explain it. And so, so many people just don't, don't even realize <coughs> that's like, even when my friend was like, Oh, do this. Like I just was doing what they said. I didn't know why, you yeah. know what I mean? So then once I like started learning from you, I was like, okay, this makes sense. Yeah. You know? And, um, there's just so many other like fads out there, like keto and stuff like that. And it's a hard because, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Because I really love, like I, I've been following like the, um, the bulletproof guy for a long time. Mm -hmm. I totally understand like his, um, explanation behind the science of giving yourself healthy fats because your brain needs it. But then it's like, there's people who take it to an extreme and they're like keto and it's just like literally all fat and protein. And they're not really t like paying attention to like, you know, the kinds of sure. things they're putting in their body. Yeah. And, and, you know, I don't, I'm not one to like sit here and bash like any other choice when you, ch when you choose to eat a certain way, right? If you choose to eat mm -hmm. keto or you choose to eat paleo, or you want to eat clean or whatever, like I'm not here to bash any style of eating that you are choosing to, to eat. The question that I have, and when we come to something like keto, that is very restrictive or, um, you know, very precise or a whole 30, the mm -hmm. question that I always ask people is, are you going to be able to like eat that way forever? Because mm -hmm. the honest answer is, I don't know very many people who start eating keto who are still eating keto six months a year down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and, and if you are trying to lose weight in a way that you aren't willing to continue to eat, you will re rebound. And that's why we see so many people go through these yo-yo diets where they, they're willing to do that for a little bit to like lose the weight, but they can't sustain it forever. And so then they just rebound and they gain all the way back and more. Um, and so when, when it comes down to something that is restrictive, um, you can only willpower for so long. And so we really need to create a, a plan for something that is um, something that you're willing to do for the rest of your life. And so with macro counting, sometimes the thing that comes up for people is kind of what you, you were saying this before that you're like, I don't want to weigh my food forever. I don't want to track my food forever. And I'm like, I, as a coach, don't want you to either. Yeah. <laughs> but what using macro counting as a tool for a period of time allows you to do is it allows you to become familiar with what it feels like to have moderation. Mm -hmm. Because so many of the women who come to me, they're like, I can eat zero cookies or if I eat a cookie, then it's like I eat the whole sleeve, right? There's like no in between. It's like either zero cookies or the whole sleeve of cookies. And I can't find that middle ground. And everybody wants moderation, but they're like, I can't do it, right? As soon as I eat a cookie, then I eat a, a ton more. And so what macro counting allows you to do, it allows you to feel what moderation feels like. It's almost like riding a bike. Um, you can't just like, as a little kid, you just can't hop on a two wheeler and find balance. Um, you're going to fall down a bunch. Mm -hmm. And so macro counting, I liken it to like putting on training wheels. It gives you that feeling of you're like, oh, this is what it feels like to eat a cookie and not feel guilty and like just enjoy it and then mm -hmm. move on and finish the rest of my day and not have to have it turn into 12. And once you can feel that and once you understand portion sizes, you understand what is in your food, so much of America doesn't have that concept of like the nutritional value of food. We just never were taught it as a kid. Um, once you have that, then I, then I encourage my clients to then transition away from tracking, transition away from weighing your food. Like we use it for a period of time as a tool, but we transition away because you will learn the things that you need to learn it to be able to maintain it. And so the way that I eat when I'm, when I was tracking macros and when I was losing weight is the same way that I eat. Like I'm eating the same foods. I, it, it's not like a different program. And that's my issue with something like keto. It's like, you're either eating keto or you're not. Exactly. And most people don't want to eat keto for the rest of their life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds fun, you know, to eat bacon. For like, for like three weeks, I think. And then I get really <laughs> yeah. sick of bacon and like egg yolks yes. and steak. I don't know. And there's, I mean, 
we can, we can talk lots about this, but just the last little plug too, is that, um, health is something that we need to be thinking about, right? Like, yes, I'm all for like you working for your aesthetic goals. I'm all for you, like transforming your body. But at the end of the day, like, I want you to be a healthier version of you. Mm -hmm. And so if you lose weight via keto, um, that that may be great, but like, how is that impacting your long-term health? And the answer is we don't really know yet, Mm -hmm. right? So it may be fine. We just don't have the research data yet of a long-term repercussions, right? Because we're talking not just eating keto for six months. We're talking about what happens when you eat keto for five years, for 10 years, for 15 years, how is that going to impact your health down the road? And we just don't really know because we don't have the research to, to tell us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's uh, like, yeah, just getting back to like the basics of the health reasons. Like for me, this year is big and we're, we're putting on our first live event in October. Woo-hoo. And it's, I'm so excited. I'm so nervous, but it's going to be two days. Um, you know, plus like a night before. So I'm like, dang, like that's a lot, you know? And just when I go and attend conferences, I'm exhausted. So I'm like, I really am like so serious, like about being in the best shape of my life. And I think so many, um, especially women. And once we have kids and we get into our thirties and forties, we're just kind of like, oh, well, you know, my best most fit days are behind me. And I don't think that's true. No, I would really love to prove to myself that like, I can be like my most fit in my forties and Mm -hmm. in my fifties and sixties and whatever. So, um, yeah, I'm just really excited. And like, what are some of like, what are some tips? Um, I know you have a class, so we'll Mm -hmm. give everybody the link to that so they can learn more, but like, what would be some like just basic tips to, um, like, get started. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Just getting started, getting like starting your health journey. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is great. Um, so yeah, I do have a free class coming next week. Um, uh, you can sign up for the, to register for it as at bicepsafterbabies.com forward slash class. Um, and so that's definitely something I would make sure you attend because I'll talk a lot about the process and what is entailed in, um, the steps to like actually get into macro counting and using it to be able to support your weight loss goals. But I really recommend, and, and here, here's something that I like differ from a lot of people, um, and maybe ways that you've approached your fitness journey before. Um, I don't like the idea of a start date. Um, I think a start date, um, it creates this connotation that like things are changing and like, um, you know, you, like it's in the future and I can't start right now. And so what I would, offer to your audience as you're listening to this is this, if this is resonating with you and you're like, yes, I, I have, I know I need to take better care of myself. I have some goals that I haven't been able to hit is that I want you to, to like tell yourself, like you are starting in this moment. Um, you don't have to have any equipment. You don't have to have any, like you haven't had have to have downloaded any apps, but like make the commitment to yourself, decide that you are starting in this moment. And then the question that I always like to give to my clients and that you can use, um, yourself, if you're listening is every day, I want my clients to ask themselves, what is one thing that I can do today? That's going to move me a little bit closer to my goals. Just one. And whenever I ask my clients, they're like, Oh, well, I'm going to meal prep. And then I'm going to go to the grocery store and then I'm going to log all my food and I'm going to weigh it. And then I'm going to like, they're going to like, give me like this list of 10 things. And, and I would come back and say, no, no, no. Like give me one thing. And then let's just focus on that one thing. Let's do it. Let's celebrate it. That's another thing that women are really bad at celebrating their wins. Uh, and then rinse and repeat the next day. Um, if you do want a, like, um, you know, a call to action of like one thing that you can start doing, I really, really highly recommend that the very first step is people download a tracking app, something like I use my fitness pal, lose it is another one. There's plenty of tracking apps that you can download on your phone for free and just start tracking your normal eating. Um, no judgment. Like you eat five cookies, you log five cookies. And so, but what you'll start to do is just start to get familiar with tracking your food and start to opening your eyes up to being like, Oh my gosh, I had no clue that bananas were all carbs. (laughs) I had no clue that I was eating a fourth a cup of peanut butter a day. Um, and so before you start making any changes, any tweaks, 
just get the data of like where you're currently at, right? We need to know where we're currently at before we can decide where we're going to go. And so that's really the first step that I would encourage mm -hmm. people to get started with. Um, and then definitely register for the class because yeah. if you've taken, you know, the last week and you've focused on just tracking <laughs> your normal intake, you'll be in a really good position then for the next steps that I'll outline in class of like, okay, once we know that, what's the next step? How do we, how do we move to that next step? Um, yeah. So, yeah. And we have, we actually have a, a, a link for my listeners. That, oh, that's right. Yeah. So bicepsafterbabies.com slash Corey. Corey. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And definitely I'll use put, that one. Yeah. And I'll put it in the show notes and stuff, but I do want to say like, yes, like the class is amazing, but I want like my listeners to know, like I would never like I would never have someone on my show that like I don't like trust and believe in. And like, I have to say, Amber, and I've been wanting to tell you this anyways, whether it's in front of my listeners or not, that like I went through your program. I watched every single module. I have literally never gone through anything as like you explain everything. Like she taught us how to use the My Fitness Pal app so that you understand it. Um, so anyways you left like no details out every single detail of that you would need to, to go with this program, to learn how to count your macros and, and not just that, like not just all the details, but like, you're actually a really good coach because you actually like gave me the power, you know, empowered me to be my own advocate, empowered me to learn this. And so it's, truly like such an amazing program. I 100% back it. Like I would recommend it to any, anybody who wants to like get on this type of journey for their health. So oh, I love hearing that. <laughs> I, I love teaching. Teaching is like one of my things that I've always, always loved. And so it's really gratifying to be able to hear that it's translating in, in the program. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Corey. Yes. Well, I, I just, I truly, truly believe in it. And that's the other thing. Like, I don't like, you know, since my brand started and I was kind of like this, not really an inf influencer, but a personal brand, I have people reaching out to me all the time, you know, and I think it makes it hard as consumers. We kind of, I don't know, I get skeptical sometimes when I see someone recommending something. I'm like, did they really like, are they just doing that so they can make money or so they can get some free product? And I just, you know, I, I don't ever promote stuff that I have not used and like actually believe in. So yeah, I just wanted my people to know that. So, Love that. um, so, okay. Do you have any other last pieces of advice or wisdom? I didn't even get into your entrepreneurial journey, which by the way, she's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think the, the last piece that I, that I really want is, um, and, and I love that you have taken this away from the program is, is to just be empowered in your journey. Um, so often, and I think it's as humans, but specifically as women, we often tend to give our power away. I'm too old. I don't have enough time. I don't have access to a gym. You know, all these like reasons why we can't be successful. And I really just want to come back to that one question that I was saying that you can use when those things start to come up. I'm too old. Like I, I'll never look the way I've had four babies. I'll never look the way I used to look. When those thoughts start coming up that aren't serving you, that are self-limiting thoughts, um, when we can come back to that, like, what is one thing that I can do today to move me forward on my goals? You continue to ask yourself that really great question and answer it and take action. You will not even like, you will be a completely different person in six months. Um, and so I feel like the all or nothing mentality, and I talk a lot about it in my coaching and in my podcast and in my, and in my um, Instagram, but the all or nothing mentality of either it has to be perfect or I can't do anything is just the biggest thing that's going to sabotage your journey. So we've got to get out of that and we got to just start taking action today. And that's why when I say, I want you to commit to starting right now. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can be messy. It can make mistakes and you can have failures. And that's exactly what I want you to do is to start taking that action because that's how we create the clarity. That's how we create the momentum. And that's how you actually change and transform your life. Yeah, I love it. And okay, so here's one question that I ask all of my guests. Um, because since my whole thing is like living out your purpose, what does living on purpose um, look like to you? Um, I think it looks a lot like how I coach my clients of being intentional. It, it is 
um, knowing where you currently are at right now, knowing where you want to go and taking the actions that it's going to take in order to get there. And to me that, that is living intentionally. It is living on purpose. It is maintaining your sense of ownership and power in the journey and not becoming that victim of, well, you know, I don't have enough money or I don't have enough time or I'm too old or all these things where we, we become this victim. Um, and I want you to retake back your power. And to me, when you take back that power, you own your choices, you own what you want to create in your life, you own your goals. That is living on purpose. I love it. I love it. And I didn't even let you know that I was going to ask you that. So. <laughs> on the spot. I know it was on the spot. <laughs> okay. Well, let everybody know where they can find you and follow you. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely get registered for a class next week. So that's bicepsafterbabies.com forward slash Corey. Um, and then I'll get you registered. Um, you can come over and hang out. I have a podcast, Biceps After Babies Radio. I talk a lot about um, macro counting, but we also bring in a lot about strength training and about the mental aspect of your fitness journey. Um, and then I'm most active on Instagram over at biceps after babies. It's all biceps after babies. Everything's which, biceps after babies. It is a brilliant name. It really <laughs> is. All right. Awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Amber. It was great chatting with you and I'm really excited about the rest of this year and following my health journey. So awesome. Thank you, Corey. All right. Bye. Thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Amber. Don't forget to get registered for her free class. The link is in the show notes. It's bicepsafterbabies.com forward slash Corey, C-O-R-I-E. And make sure you get yourself also on the early bird wait list for the live event that's happening this October. That's at CoreyClark.com slash live. All the links are in the show notes. Make sure you guys follow Amber on social media. Give her some love. And if you haven't yet, I would love for you to go to iTunes and leave a five-star rating and a review. Let me know what you love about the show, what you resonate with on the show so that I know what to bring more of this year. And when you do that, it helps other people find the show as well. So I would greatly appreciate it. Send me a DM on Instagram. Let me know what you love about the show and I will see you back here next week. 